อะมาเสิร์ฟอ that video was my 100th video but for this video Uh, thoughts of talking about Steven Universe, mainly that final episode, and how the final episode was meh. They, as the fans already predicted, used Steven becoming a monster as the main villain, or the final villain, just like all of the people in the universe already fucking predicted. And Rebecca Sugar just didn't. Uh, to actually bring up anything new, as everybody expected, everybody predicted Stephen would become a monster, get healed, uh, then might leave Beach City. So there isn't really much to talk about. Now that is a replacement sort of topic, the main topic, as that was just something for filler. Yes, my videos don't actually need a filler, but I just wanted to get something out of the way. Steven Universe, the final episode. The final episode was meh. Mild. However, that was an official end. They should have an open world game. No, that'll be bad. Here's, uh, here's the thing concerning environmentally friendly forms of energy. They all have pros or cons. For example, a solar panel, a PV for uh, the solar a PV or photovoltaic effect, you can put up a solar panel basically anywhere that's above ground and is not being attacked by shadow. But renewable energy for billions of years or until the material wears out. But you could have nanobots repair the panel so there's uh, so that fixes the material, and there's a turbine, put a turbine over the land, just like a solar panel but much louder, and has a minimal amount of required area, or put uh, a turbine closer to the ocean but you'd have to go beneath water and have to deal with all the coal, you have to uh, fight all the coals, all the monsters, Cthulhu, Swordfish, uh, Great White Shark, the Whale Shark, of course the Whale Shark's a herbivore but so large you might get swallowed. So uh, then there's a tidal turbine, far more powerful, but a tidal turbine that's completely beneath water. So there's nothing above water that's much easier to fix. You could use uh, maybe a version of solar, maybe solar concentrated, like a parabolic dish, be it a trough or aforementioned disc, aforementioned solar disc, or something that collects a lot of solar energy uh, and collects it all onto a specific spot, such as a pole, a pipe, a piece of metal, a tank. This could be a matter of collecting a lot of solar energy per area. 25% as opposed to the modern 20% or even 44% and that version actually has a type of panel that's applied as a panel. Hmm. That's also much cheaper. Oh, solar thermal. A tank heated up by a lot of solar rays. The solar concentrated also uses a lot of solar heat. Well, that, that's depending upon the version. Uh, the, solar con the solar thermal uses a lot of this concentrated energy from the, su uh, the energy of the sun. Collects all that solar energy, points it at a tank that contains either a fluid, a fluid such as a water or molten salt, and that's boiled up to the salt's heat or something. And that's over. That's basically 75% solar efficiency. Concerning how much energy they get per area, per time, uh, a turbine, be it air or yeah, mainly air, that's almost like 40% solar efficiency or an equivalent of uh, basically 40% solar efficiency. Meanwhile, there's just, uh, you know, trying on the glove. Yeah, it's. Uh, 
Then there's the wind, that's 40% solar efficiency, or an equivalent version. Uh, geothermal, you have to be upon the land, and uh, there's plenty of power per area, close to like 50% of solar efficiency, uh, per, you know, for an equivalent. So, uh, considering how much power per area, per time, that's like solar being a 50% solar efficiency. Meanwhile, a plant has 1% solar efficiency, algae has 2, yet somehow functions as if it's closer, as if algae is more like 60% solar efficiency. However, algae will be just, you know, thought of as 2% solar efficiency. The pragmatic route. So, you'd need an entire continent covered. It, as to power the world, there's, assuming there's 10 billion people, so 2 billion more than the current amount, and every person has 150 kilowatts per day, that's 30 for a house, 30 for an electric powered car as to go uh, 300 kilometers, 30 for 10 times the amount of energy that you need from food, 3 kilowatt hours, that could be used as 10 people's worth of uh, energy from food, uh, thanks to hydroponic gardens or something. That depends on how that energy can be applied. The rest, just in case, there's the, uh, your place of work, there's an additional transportation. Assuming there's 10 billion people and every person has 150 kilowatts per day, for solar, you would need one million square kilometres, or a thousand by a thousand kilometres. You could fit all that over the Sahara Desert, or most of that over a lot of Australia. But for the long run, you should go for, you should go for something that's much tinier. Fortunately, uh, there is the nuclear option. Oh, just going to bring up uh, tidal. Though there is a very tiny amount of energy from a tidal, uh, a tidal uh, thing, like a turbine for the ocean, there is, however, this, this is this little flaw. They're not actually uh, modified. They're very weak. Very, a, a tiny amount of energy per area. So, uh, a tiny amount of energy per area, but have the potential to be like... Uh, the area of the city of London, that's all you need. So 50 by 50 kilometers, maybe 5,000 squared kilometers or 70 by 70 kilometers. Here's the nuclear option. The amount of thorium as the power of the world, you'd have to mine all the thorium, assuming one part per million, you'd have to mine all the thorium from five uh, cubic or squared kilometers per year. Or go for a thousand years from 5,000 square kilometres or 70 by 70. There are plenty of places that have a lot of this uh, open area for something like 70 by 70 kilometres. Unfortunately, because uh, a nuclear power plant has uh, a gigawatt per hour, assuming the uh, power plant for nuclear, be it uranium or thorium, uh, assuming that's an entire kilometre per power plant, you would need 90,000 square kilometres. Or 300 by 300 kilometers. However, here's my adaptation. Behold, the cubic or cubic hectare thorium reactor design, and this design, uh, this is a matter of an entire cubic kilometer of area mined, and it's all filled with nothing but uh, cubic hectares, 100 by 100 by 100 metres, uh, of the, that being all thorium reactors. Uh, considering the amount of energy output from a thorium reactor, and uh, comparing a reactor size compared to all the systems, how many reactor widths wide, how many reactor heights tall, uh, making, a bit, making a few assumptions, but Basically, you could fit probably six uh, 25 megawatt reactors for this I call the nuclear log. Or the nuke log, because nuclear is a stupid word. So the nuke log. That is 20 by 20 by 100 meters. That's because the rest of that area, that's all the, because all the rest of the area is taken up by 
uh, houses to fit 15 people. Why, and why 15? That is because the rest of the area down uh, has all the hydroponic, power, uh, hydroponic gardens or such for feeding 15 people. That means you, should, you should, uh, can sustain the people that are there for maintenance or just uh, normal workers. Uh, assuming 25 megawatts per hour times a thousand cubic hectares, because a thousand cubic hectares per kilometre, you should be able to get like 25 gigawatts, 25 times more powerful than the uh, normal nuclear reactor. The nuke reactor. So, as opposed to 90,000 square kilometres, or 300 by 300, you need uh, 4,000 square kilometres, just less than 70 by 70 kilometres. You can also, uh, that's assuming uh, just one reactor per nuke log, as you could fit six, you can go six times more amount of power per area, so you could go for 700 square kilometres, uh, 1,000 square kilometres, that'd be like 30 by 30 kilometres. Meaning thorium is uh, an option. Of course, the amount of thorium you could get from the area you mined, the uh, thorium from 90,000 square kilometres, or cubic kilometres, uh, 5,000 is 1,000 years, meaning 90,000, yeah, many thousands of years, 18,000 years. Or, uh, you go for the first version of my new design, you go for the first version of my sort of our design, uh, 25 megawatts per cubic hectare, you uh, could have 140 odd years of nuclear power. Actually, that might be the second of the designs. I mean, the second of the design, that would be 20 odd years or maybe 140 years. Of course, you could mine the 1,000 years of thorium from 5,000 cubic or square kilometres from someplace else, from just a different place. There's this uh, patch that's near China you can mine. This looks like it could just be mostly sand. Might be a monument or something, so maybe not there. But all you need is 4,000 square kilometres, 700 square kilometres, meaning uh, 70 by 70 kilometres or 30 by 30 kilometres. Oh, 30 by 30, that would be 900 kilometres. Oh, yeah. 30 by 30 ish, 20 by 20, actually 20 by 20, that would be 400 square kilometres. But uh, all this research shows thorium could actually be the best op the very best option, considering how much energy per area. Meanwhile, thorium, uh, that's a nuclear power plant, uh, that's also assuming that the amount of power, the amount of that energy from 20 hours of work four hours of maintenance. Coming back to Tidal, assuming that you could unlock the potential, the greatness of Tidal, the potential, you would need thousands of square kilometres or hundreds of square kilometres. Yeah, because after checking, the Tidal and my two versions of uh, nuclear, they're actually crisscrossing. But, uh, of course, this also depends upon the area you picked for your Tidal. There's a place near Antarctica so great in tidal power, there's like 130 kilowatt hours per squared or, cu or cubic metre. Meanwhile, other places have like one kilowatt hour or ten. Uh, this would appear nuclear is uh, currently the greatest option for powering the grid. Unless you could make a nuclear power plant as tiny as a stove you keep within your back garden, the best non-grid, the very best of all the non-grid types of power must be solar, because you could put a solar panel pretty much anywhere. Followed by a turbine, as you could put a turbine pretty much anywhere followed by a biomass reactor, maybe you can make a, a tinier version of a tiny generator. You just need a little a, a farm. You wouldn't really get a lot of energy, but uh, 
I? Oh, that's the time that it reached. Tell me your opinion in the comment section.